Beautiful national anthem. Welcome to the 2023 GHSA Football Championships on GBB. The fans have been amazing here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium all week and more to come from them today. Hey everyone, I'm Hannah Gooden. It's day three of our Boys and Girls Championship coverage. And if you've missed any of the action, we've had some really fun things happen this week. Two defending champs in Prince Avenue Christian and Bowden won again. And we had two newcomers, Perry and Stockbridge, face each other yesterday. The Panthers took that trophy back home to Houston County. Let's take a look at what could happen today. First up is the flag Division Three title game between Pope and Alatoona. Both teams looking to make school history. Then at 1 o'clock, it's the boys' turn, and AAA Savannah Christian will face Cedar Grove for the first time ever. It's the Saints' third championship appearance in a row. They won it all in 2021. At 4 o'clock and 5A, it's Coffee versus Creekside. This is the only title game between a number one and two ranked teams this year. And finally, at 7 o'clock, it's the much anticipated 7A showdown between Milton and Walton. These are two rival programs just 11 and a half miles apart. This place is going to be packed, and it's going to be racked. Matt and Wayne will be on the call and John will be on the sidelines. I'm up here on the set. Speaking of John, let's check in with him for another great girls flag football story to get things started, John. Thank you very much, Hannah. Good morning, however you're accessing us. Large device or small here at GPB, GPB.org and the GPB Sports app. These two Cobb County schools met about six weeks ago and it was all Pope. For the Alatoona Bucks, it was one of those transformational moments of the season. They got to ask themselves with players coming in players coming out how do we want to handle a loss by 33 points it was 40 to 7 it was 26 nothing before anybody blinked how did they answer the bell they made it to the last game of the year for Pope once again you're talking about a team that has been offense offense and offense they have scored less than 22 points less than uh, only three times they have not they haven't cleared that number so one of those was in the semifinal at 7-6. Blessed Trinity kind of ground the game, had possession, and was clinical, but Pope made it to the last game of the year. It's number 14 nationally, number 17 nationally. What happens? That's the early story from the ground floor. Let's go to the penthouse. Wiley Ballard and Dave Reynolds take it away. And Nelly, could you start day three with a better matchup? A couple of top 20 flag football teams across the country in the Division Three state championship. A couple of first-timers, the Pope Greyhounds, the Alatoona Buccaneers, and we welcome you upstairs into our perch alongside our flag guru, Dave Reynolds. I'm Wiley Ballard. And Dave, John talked about it. It was a lopsided first meeting a month and a half ago. You don't think it'll be that type of margin again, do you? Yeah, this is championship Wednesday here, day three. Throw out four to seven. Nobody remembers that anymore. Alatoona, three out of four years, have been in the semifinals, gets over that hump this year. Uh, and then Pope getting better out every single time. First round, semifinal, quarterfinal appearances. So uh, glad to finish the season off really well today. And for Pope, you look at Olivia O'Connor. They call her Ogo. She's a two-way star, but offensively, she's put up some ridiculous numbers. Yeah, absolutely. All over the field today, sometimes wide receiver, sometimes running back. Almost 2,000 yards of total offense, 28 touchdowns. Really shifty hips, phenomenal defender. Look out for number 13 because she'll be all over the field today. Now, Alatoona, they've got quite the weapon at their quarterback spot. Macy Strickland, she might have the strongest arm in the state for flag football. Yeah, for you stat gurus out there, uh, almost 4,000 yards of combined offense, 70 touchdowns of count of four as we wrap up the 2023 flag football season. Expect some fireworks out of number seven, Macy Strickland. Now, I know we got a couple of first-time flag football viewers out there, Dave. So what are the key distinctions between flag and tackle football? Yeah, the field today will be 80 yards long and 40 yards wide. First down will be achieved by gaining the zone line to gain, which are fixed 20 yards apart. Big rule change here. We will play four 10-minute quarters with a running clock until the last two minutes of each half. Under two minutes, the clock will stop. Similar to tackle football with incomplete passes, scores, and so forth. Every player eligible to catch a forward pass today. So expect the center to get involved in the passing game. Last one, flag football is a non-contact contact sport. So we'll see some screen blocking instead of initiating contact with their opponent. The Alatoona Buccaneers looking to exact some revenge, led by head coach Jordan Davis in his fourth season. This is the first time he's been on the sideline of a state championship game since his sophomore year of high school at McEachern. On the Pope side, head coach Kevin Frazier in his third season. And his father, Mark, an assistant on staff, he started playing flag football at the age of 12. He's known the sport for a long time, and now has a chance to lead Pope to a state championship. Division three, state final. Yeah. 
And off we go. Quarterback Riley Benzman gets a complete out to K. Davenport. Thought for a moment her flag might have been pulled, but they will say she got the pass away. And a gain of five yards. It's second down and one. Nice poise right there by Benzman, just staying in the pocket right there. The eyes open, even though the pressure's right there, almost pulling the flag. And we teased Macy Strickland, but Benson, Benzman has thrown for over 4,000 yards this year as that pass falls incomplete. A look at the support group for Benzman in the starting lineup. Giselle Aitken, Carly Oobes, keep an eye on that name. The only games Pope has lost have been on games that Carly Oobes has not played. We've also got Leyland Nixon and Faith Stokes in the blocker positions, Kate Davenport as well. That's the center spot. And it's a direct snap to the right side. That flag is pulled, and it is enough for a first down. And Olivia O'Connor, her first touch, gets a first down. Direct snap right there, really close to the line to game. For the fans at home, we are not going to use video review for the flag football game there. So, Alatuna coach wanted a second look there. Ball's extended, brings up a long first down now. And again, in flag football, there's no kickoffs. It's just start from your own 14 after a score at the start of a half. And there are zones to gain. Every 20 yards means a new set of downs. And a late pitch, but that falls to the ground as the flag was pulled that time by Macy Strickland. Linebacker should be on epic quarterback when Alatuna gets possession. But Dave, that's another key point in flag football. If the ball hits the ground, it's not a live ball. It's a dead ball. And there's Riley Benzman's numbers. 4,000 yards looking for touchdown pass number 70 today. So second down and about 22 is the throw just off the fingertips of Carly Oobes. And a late flag comes out. Bottom in the area of pass interference, you think? Yeah, a lot of contact there. Pass interference, defense, 10 yard penalty, replay second down. Our head referee, Sheldon Smith, and this is an area where tackle and flag football are very similar, right? Yeah, you know, maybe going for the ball there, but again, it's a lot of the ab above the neck right there. And again, non contact, contact sport. So we'll see some incidental contact, uh, but not initiating contact. We'll replay the down here. Second and seven, line gains of 40. Kennedy Austin called for the penalty there. Junior, a speedy cornerback, and now a quick rush. And was the flag pulled? Yes, that's a sack. Jasmine Barnes like lightning. About her, about her 33rd sack of the season. Incredible speed up front, first year player. Very aggressive. And that was a spot where there were no blockers left to protect Benzman. That was supposed to be a quick hitting play, and Barnes just too fast. Yeah, expect Pope to use a lot of motion, a lot of movement, a lot of uh, different options here uh, on offense. Right there, let the guy, let the uh, girl go in the flats, and not enough time. A loss of five yards, third and 12. Benzman, and she sacked again. Jasmine Barnes. Well, they ruled that an incomplete pass. Thought she pulled the flag in time. Ruled incomplete either way. It's fourth, fourth and 12. Down, fourth is elected to kick. We talk a lot about offense and the quarterbacks and 3,000 yards here, 4,000 yards there. The good teams have the, the, the girl up front who can apply that pressure right there. Blocking three. Jasmine Barnes says, I don't care. I'll go right around you. Applies that pressure. Didn't quite pull that flag. And a deep punt this time from Faith Stokes. And it is dropped by Aoife Flynn, 36-yard punt. And again, you can feel a punt, that's live, right, Dave? But once you touch it, if you do not secure it, it's a dead ball. Yeah, right there, again, she has possession. She's going back upfield, just drops it. Might be a little nerves right there. Uh, pretty good at offensive player right there to drop the ball in, in open space. And there are those numbers again, over 50 touchdowns. Macy Strickland, and we're told she can throw it about 50 yards. So on an 80-yard flag football field, accounts for a lot. Strickland over the middle, it's hauled in. Good hands from the center, Hazel Schultz. And a look at the starters for Alatuna on offense. Kiki Daniels, Aoife Flynn, a couple of the top targets. Sophia Settle and Kelsey Grindley, or Kinsley Grindley, I beg your pardon. 
And Hazel Schultz there at center. Strickland rolling. Goes back. A dangerous pass, but she connects it. And it's another completion to Hazel Schultz, a four-year starter for Alatuna now in her senior season. Nice job just buying time again. Good quarterbacks can do that. Rolls the pocket a little bit, plants direct. A little back foot throw there. Changes the arm slot. That's beautiful to watch. You know, for those who are talking about stats and 4,000 yards, again, like you mentioned, this game is shorter in length, uh, time-wise, and also distance than tackle football. So give you the perspective of those numbers in a shortened season. Strickland again to the air that time, overshooting her intended target, Aoife Flynn. A look at Pope's defensive starters. Faith Stokes, Mac Wiley up front, pressuring the quarterback. Olivia O'Connor along with Layla Nixon, the two linebackers. And there in the secondary, Abby Benzman, the younger sister of quarterback Riley Benzman, and Carly Oobes, a two-way player, with Sarah Gentry, perhaps the most improved player at that safety spot. It's third down and one. The pass is batted down. Great hands that time up front. Faith Stokes. Fourth down, the offense is elected to play. And Altoon is going to go for it here. They need one yard to get to the next zone to gain. We talked about it all week, Wiley, right? So uh, even if the offense doesn't get the line to gain here, it brings up, it turns over and downs, a long first and 19. So not a terrible idea here by the aggressive head coach from Mackworth, Georgia. And they will try and run it ahead. The flag has not been pulled yet. They use the long, lanky reach of Ava Glassmeyer there to stretch it over into the zone to gain. <laughs> she coach Davis saying, hey, keep running. They don't pull your flag. Just keep running. <laughs> play to the whistle, play to the whistle, play to the whistle. You know, Coach talked about, uh, Coach uh, Davis talked about, if I get in that fourth and short, even on the minus side of the field, going to be aggressive. And we see it right here on the first drive going forward on fourth down. Opening possession for Alatuna after stopping Pope. Strickland pitches it back. It's off the hands. And that ball will be spotted for a loss because that was a, a lateral pass. That's a pretty significant loss. One more look. Yeah, nice shot right there. Just keeping the quarterback in front of you. Uh, Pope's going to use two rushers sometimes, or sometimes one rusher. One's maybe more of a spy. And right there, we know the quarterback's rolling away from the passing arm. Tougher throw. Just keep the quarterback in front of you. Nice job right there of making that go out of bounds. And now second down and 26. Strickland. Completes it to Aoife Flynn. She makes the catch on her knees. It'll still be third down and long. And for Alatuna, Dave, I know they're in a third and long situation, but this game has started much more favorably than their prior meeting when Pope got out to a 21-0 lead in the first quarter. In a hurry again. Big lights, big stage here. They've seen each other this year on the field. 40-7, to that's no longer a thought process. Strickland glancing over to her sideline, looking for the play calls. They stack a couple receivers near the sidelines, and they'll go to the back receiver. It is complete, and just shy of the line to gain, I believe. It'll depend on the spot. Aubrey Moore. Great run and catch. Might get flag guarding here. Yeah, we do have a flag down. If that's the case, I'll describe that in a second. Flag guarding, offense, 10 yard penalty, replay, third down. So Dave, what constitutes flag guard? So by definition, follow me here, Wiley, okay? If you guard the flag, it's flag guard, and that's really deep by the rules guru. So uh, that swipe kind of down by the flag belt, maybe a dip by the shoulder. Uh, if we prevent access from the defender, pull my flag, flag guarding. I'll tell you what, Dave. You you're the, you're the sharpest guy we got on staff here. I learned well from the, done. I learned from the best, Wally. Thank you for having me. So that pass down, incomplete Alatuna now brings up kick. fourth and long, and Alatuna is going to kick it here. And there's no fake punting or going to go for it and then punt. You have to declare prior to the play here in flag football. So the punt coming from Julia Devon. No rush, of course, has plenty of time. A pretty good strike. Handled just inside the 10-yard line of this 80-yard field by Carly Oobes and a nice pull in pursuit. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. A 10-minute running clock 
Each team with one possession. And so far, the defenses have matched each other with a stop. the end of the first quarter. Alatuna and Pope. First quarter of the final day of the GHSA championships in the book. We got no score in the flag football final. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. In the blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future. Every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. In lively towns and peaceful rural areas, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are on a mission to provide a different kind of electricity. Our not-for-profit, member-owned EMCs are focused on making life better for members. At private residences, farms, and thriving businesses, we work for you. Generating safe, reliable, affordable electricity, giving back to local programs, serving our members to make life brighter. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Pope and Alatuna, a couple of area rivals squaring off in the state final. No score through 10 minutes of play. Happy to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. And a look inside the Pope huddle, head coach Kevin Frazier. They do a lot of, of pitch activity, which essentially, Dave, in tackle football terms would be a bunch of laterals, right? That's the idea. And the penalty for that, not as severe in flag because if it hits the ground, it's a dead ball. But you've mentioned it time and time again over the past couple of years. Teams that can do that, that's one of the reasons Pope's offense is so effective. Your high-level offenses, pitch and catch. Pitch is short, boom, boom, boom. Invite the defense right up in, and then we can go over the top offensively. A lot of options. Uh, you know, Pope has only a handful of plays in the playbook, but because they're able to pitch and catch, they have way more variations of that playbook. Riley Benzman, the quarterback wearing 14. She has started every game at quarterback for Pope in their three years, now a senior. And she floats it over the top. The ball is tipped and batted away by Strickland. And a look at the Alatuna defense here. Jasmine Barnes has already made her impact felt at the rusher's spot. You've also got Hazel Schultz up there. Macy Strickland playing both ways. Reagan Fuchs, a junior linebacker with the good instincts. And then Kiki Daniels, terrific athlete. We've seen Kennedy Austin on the other side of the corner spot. And at safety, Aoife Flynn. So second down and four. Stretching ahead, not going to get there. That was a rush from Giselle Aitken. She'll be playing in college at Berry College on the soccer field. And offenses that use these quick pitches are trying to set up some plays right there, obviously. Uh, but the, the way to stop that is to have one rusher and then the other person, middle linebacker, maybe spy the, 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 uh, the ball carrier. So if we can get pressure up front by number two all day long, that's going to slow down the Pope offense. And for a team that can get pressure with one, that can be a difference maker as it's now fed ahead. What a snag, one-handed. Oh, man, Layla Nixon. Check out those gloves she's got for hands. <laughs> That's a highlight play. Got a couple of basketball players also out here for the Pope uh, uh, squad. And you can see how just long that edge just reached out there and just give me that. Nice job of creating open space. Got a flag down. Yeah, I'll wait. So pass interference there on the defense. That'll move it up to the 28 yard or 27 yard line. Again, we're playing on a 100 yard tackle field, so the yardage marks that are painted on the field aren't entirely accurate. And a couple of pitching and catching here. Good hips. And that flag finally yanked loose by Aoife Flynn. But Kate Davenport from the center spot. Again, just pitch and catch, pitch and catch, pitch and catch. Good pitch relationship. Still looking for that next pitch option. Uh, again, everybody's eligible in the field no matter where they start. So, of course, number third is going to be a part of the offense on this pitch and catch. She had a little jelly move there with the football. So second down and short. Trying to get across midfield. It's pitched back. They've got the first. And Olivia O'Connor is spinning ahead before she's stopped just shy of the 35. 
And again, those are new to flag football. If she doesn't pitch that, the ball's probably pulled right there at the line of the game because she pitches it. Four more yards, five more yards to the next person has to be disciplined and be there to make the flag pull. And you might sit there and say, well, she had the first down. Why bother pitching it? Well, if you're going to get taken down when it's going to be first and 19 or first and 18, you'd much rather take a shot at trying to get to first and 15. Again, it just sets up the defense, right? You want to make sure that they're playing their person and they're being disciplined. So, again, the motions and the different formation is going to challenge the defense. Benzman out on a screen to O'Connor. Great hands, Reagan Fuchs with the reach and pull. And look, the Alatoona defense knew they had quite the challenge coming into play today. One of the keys defensively is you've got to pull flags on that first opportunity. Yeah, you don't pull flags. The next flag puller is 10 yards away. So how do you slow down a fast offense, a multi-faceted out offense? Pull that first flag. So second down and 16 after a one-yard gain. And a direct snap, a little pop pass, and a pitch back. And will they say the flag got pulled? No, they will say she got the pitch off in time, and so it winds up in the hands of Abby Benzman. Again, the short pitches for flag football offensively is beautiful. If you're the statistician, good luck keeping up with who gets what yards here. Doesn't matter. Just staying on rhythm here, chopping the next down in distance in half. Clicking a little bit here for the Greyhounds. Well, that's why we got to get the best in the city. Kevin Barnes running our stats today. Riley Benzman, a dangerous pass jarred loose by Flynn. Now, there was some contact there, but incidental, Dave. Yeah, I'm good with no, no foul there. Two players trying to play the ball, right? Riley might have just been able to, to run to her right and just ran for the first down there, but again, tries to go across the field. Tough throw there for uh, no matter how talented of a quarterback you are. So after the third down incompletion, it is fourth and seven. They've got to get to the painted 30-yard line. And Pope talking about it right now, what they want to do. With the seven seconds on the play clock, will they take a delay a game and punt here? Might go with a timeout here. Which, again, there's only three timeouts per game. Uh, so timeout. get the call Pope, correct. The first timeout of the game. You're down here again. You're on the plus side of the field fourth and seven, get the right offensive play call in, in, on the field. Don't want to ruin this drive by stalling uh, on the plus side of the field. The Pope Greyhounds 25 and two this year in their third year of flag football. And look, the first two seasons, blessed Trinity knocking them out. And they beat BT in the semifinals to get to this game this year. Yeah, but you know, when you look at the, the scores there against BT, right? Very competitive matchup. The semifinal came down to an unsuccessful try. Uh, so, although BT's kind of had the number there, Postman on the heels to get over the top. Coach Frazier told us it was an emotional win for Pope. Uh, and they spent a couple days, Thursday night, all day Friday, really reveling in it. You know, the way the playoff format was this year, they played two rounds, played two games on Tuesday first two rounds on Tuesday. Then on Thursday, you played your semis and your quarters. Fourth down, Very emotional week for all flag football athletes across the state last week. So fourth down and seven, Pope going for it. They got to get to the painted 30-yard line. Benzman going for much more than that. She's got a receiver open. Touchdown! A go route from Ogo. <laughs> Olivia O'Connor with the score. Her 20th touchdown catch of the year, a 27-yard strike. Nice job, just rolling the pocket right there. Knows where we're going, one-on-one -on -one matchup. Uh, speed on speed right there. A little, little double move there. Kiki Daniels has her eyes kind of in the back, though maybe a little too much there. Very talented corner back there. Just gets a little, a little crossed up. Talk about a dime, too, from Riley Benzman. So now Pope will go for the extra point from the three-yard line. Benzman dropping back. And she dumps it off. And that flag is pulled shy of the goal line. Good hands from Kennedy Austin. And that's a key point. We've seen a lot of competitive matchup here in the Benz during championship week. Overtime game yesterday. Extra points matter. Get the points when you can. 
especially in flag football when you don't have field goals, the three-point kick. We don't have any of that here. Uh, so you got to get the points when you can. It's a good stop right there for the Buccaneers. So Alatoon, after giving up the score, they'll take it first and six from their own 14. And this pass right on the money and complete in a stretch from Aubrey Moore. That will be enough for a first down out to the 24-yard line. Getting a little different look there. You have two more uh, quarterbacks back there, so kind of a three-quarterback set right there to spread the field. There's athletes on both sides of the ball for both teams. Try to get your athlete in space right there, mixing up a little look right there. Three-minute mark come and gone here in this first half. Pope, a 6-0 lead. Macy Strickland trying to see if she and the Buccaneers can tie it up going in to half. And the pass batted high in the air, and it will fall to the ground. Great hands, Faith Stokes. That's her second breakup today she's had from point blank. Not, not afraid to bat some balls down, some passes down there. Fierce competitor. You know, how do you stop a a 4,000 yard quarterback, apply that pressure, take away the passing lane right there. Nice job by the rusher. Strickland under pressure again. She plays it back, looking for the double pass, and it is caught by Flynn. Was she inbounds? Yes. What a catch, Aoife Flynn. It's a gain of five. Approaching the two minute warning here. And it looks like Alatuna will take the two-minute warning. Coach Jordan Davis, big third down coming up. As the clock stops. And here we go. Tight formation. Strickland gets it away. It's complete. That time, Sophia Settle with her first catch of the game. She had two touchdowns in that semifinal win against Sequoia. Another look here offensively for the Buccaneers. Just find the open person. Plenty of space right there for the senior wide receiver. Pick up the first down. Clock will now run. That play ended inbound. So first down, stops the clock. Then we keep it moving. So first down and 11. Please reset the game clock to two minutes. We're going to add 13 seconds there. I'm not sure if that was the right call. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, this pass deflected in the air. Looked like Hazel Schultz was looking for a pass interference call there. Yeah, so show me this double pass, Dave. So this one is backwards. Yep, there we go. Boom. First one's backwards. No question about that. Second one's forward. So just like tackle football, you can only have one forward pass per play. Just like tackle football, you can have as many backwards passes uh, as you want to. The forward pass always has to be behind the line of scrimmage. So a little extra time here for and Alatuna as that pass was complete to Aubrey Moore. And now it's going to be third down and two. Got plenty of time, but you don't want to be too deliberate with the clock here. Coming in with the play call. That's Lila Paradiso. Empty backfield for Strickland. Here comes the rush. Over the middle, and it's off the hands. I think Aoife Flynn, that got there a little quicker than she thought it was going to. And now fourth down and two. Might have had a little miscommunication on that route. My receiver didn't get, didn't get her head around. Uh, but again, nice up applying the pressure up front to kind of force that issue a little bit there. Obviously, Coach uh, Davis will go for it here on fourth down. Strickland now 7 for 11 for 73 yards in this first half. Trying to get Alatuna into that goal-to-go zone. Got to get to the paint at 30. And it's snagged by Flynn. Touchdown, Alatuna. Right up the seam. She had her head turned around that time. Really good adjustment right there from one play to the next, which, which high-quality teams do. Make adjustment. You forget about the mistake last time. You make the adjustment, next play, next play, next play. Boom, 
Right there, slot receiver, right on time. High points, the ball comes down with it and just outruns the Greyhound to the end zone. And now a chance to take the lead, going for the one extra point. And it is speared out of the air. Great hands from Ava Glassmeyer, the tallest player on the field, high points it. And Alatuna leads seven to six. Nice response right there. Calm, cool, collective into the half. Didn't have the burn timeout again. You get three per game right there. So uh, kudos to uh, Coach Davis and Coach Harrison, the offensive coordinator, just right up top. Ain't nobody catching that one but number 12. Nice relationship there between the receiver and the quarterback to pick up the extra point. Now Pope with a minute and 13 seconds. Little dump off pass is complete to O'Connor. It will be enough. No, it will not. Actually, two yards short of the first down. Under a minute to play. You say, oh, uh, Pope has two timeouts. Why are they not using them? Well, you only get three timeouts for the entire game. To wrap up the first half. Benzman. A shot complete. Layla Nixon. Good hands. She used two that time, Dave. That's way. You know, she's good with one hand catching the ball or two. Well done. Seven plays, 76 yards, and then Alatuna scoring drive there in the second quarter. 18 yard catch there from Layla Nixon. Benzman rolling to the right. Got it off, and the pitch falls to the ground. And the clock will run. 25 seconds left in the first half. Again, nice IQ right there by the center. She knows the linebacker is right on top of her. She's looking to pitch that ball to get on the edge. And a spike to stop the clock. You know, for your, for your centers, again, offensively, uh, maybe not the tallest or the fastest on the field, but definitely has a high IQ of the spatial awareness and where everybody is on the field. That makes an offense click. If we can get that seventh person involved, look out. Yeah, and Kate Davenport, to your point, high IQ. She's the point guard of the basketball team and also the backup quarterback behind Benzman. So a tight formation, 16 seconds. They got to get to midfield for a first. And a lob pass. And the clock will run. Strickland pulls the flag. Aiken couldn't get out of bounds. Five seconds on fourth down. They've got to go. And that will be the half. So Pope wants to conserve those two timeouts. They trail by just a point as we hit halftime. John Nelson will be down with Coach Davis momentarily, but we saw zeros in the first quarter and a couple of long scoring drives in the second. It was a 74-yard drive for Pope to give them a 6-0 lead, but Alatuna responds, and John Nelson joined by Alatuna coach Jordan Davis. Thank you very much, Wiley. Let's go through that touchdown. You saw the seam route. It was open. Speed took care of the rest. Yes, absolutely. Aoife has been able to do that a lot this year for us. She gets in that slot there, uh, works up the middle, and she's great hands, and she's able to catch it and accelerate away. And that was a huge play in the momentum of this game right now. Yes, sir. Let's talk about defense holding them to that one score early on. But once again, they got the early score, and you've clamped down ever since. We did, and that was it was huge. I mean, made a mistake on defense there, let them get over the top on us on the outside. But, um, yeah, I mean, defensively, we have been been a much better uh, today than we were last time we played them, and it's been huge. And the obviously the motion and everything else we're handling a lot better today. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Alatuna gets the extra point, and that has been the difference. Seven six here at the break under the big top, a big fourth down score for Pope gave them the early lead. The Bucks responded in kind. Regions halftime show with Hannah coming up right up next on the Great GBB. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive.
half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Our number one priority is protecting our players. That's why we're writing new rules for the sport and developing innovative educational tools to protect our athletes. This is player protection. This is high school football. Welcome to the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show presented by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. I'm Hannah Gooden. It is day three of action here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's the 2023 GHSA Boys and Girls Championships, and we are at the half of the Division Three flag football game between Pope and Alatuna. Let's get you caught up on what's happened so far on Georgia's EMC's scoreboard. Georgia's EMC's so much more than electricity. So your halftime score, Alatuna 7, Pope 6. Both of these teams are in the final game of the year for the first time in program history. The Greyhounds had not allowed a point in the postseason until the semifinals. They won that one 7-6. We will see what happens in the second half. They just gave up a score to the Buccaneers. That defense will have to be on fire in the second if they want to win this one. Time now for our Georgia Player Spotlight brought to you by You Save It Pharmacy. And today we are highlighting a young gymnast, Jazlyn Jackson. At just 15 years old, I cannot believe that. She's already a level 10 gymnast. Here's her story. Jazlyn is a ball of energy. She's always been. Um, she's always been that, that kid that wanted to prove that she could do anything. Being a level 10 gymnast, it was, it was really hard to get here. It took a lot of conditioning, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. These girls spend 20 to 30 hours a week just practicing. Congratulations, Jaslyn Jackson, on all of your success early on. So much more to come from her. And thank you, You Save It Pharmacy, for another great spotlight. Okay, coming up next, it'll be the first boys tackle game of the day at 3 o'clock. It's Savannah Christian versus Cedar Grove. And I am here with Savannah Christian head of school, Jeff Plunk. Jeff, thank you so much for the time to come up here, find us, and sit on the set with me. Thank you. We're very excited to be here. How has the experience been so far? I know you guys just walked in the door. What's it feel like to be here in the bin? It's great. It's great. We actually brought the boys over last night because okay. we drove up and spent the night. Wanted them to get to see the facility yeah. and kind of get the jitters out, hopefully, before today when they take the field. This is the team's first time back in the final game of the year since they won in 2011. What would this mean to your school and community? It would mean a lot. Um, football in the South means a lot. It yep. means a lot in Savannah, obviously, and, and these boys have worked hard. They really started working for this last January, and our coach told our community yesterday they just completed their 84th practice, so wow. they've been working hard with the goal of getting getting to the bins and hopefully bringing home a championship. Absolutely. Well, since you're here, tell us more about your school, what's going on athletically and academically. Academically. Great. Well, we are a pre-K-12 school. It's a private school, so this has been a big event for us um, in our, and really leading up the whole week. Uh, but just earlier this week, we got college admissions results from Georgia Tech, and earlier last month, we got results from University of Georgia. Um, outstanding results. Again, our school was recently named an AP Honor Roll School for the first time. Wow. We had our highest AP scores in our history. So lots of good things happening. And, and one thing I would highlight is we have two mission teams headed out. One this spring is, is headed down to Costa Rica and then another going to Africa. So uh, we believe a lot of education takes place outside the classroom. And some of that's on the football field, but some of it happens in the mission field as well. Well, very cool. I know you're very proud of Absolutely. your school. For those who don't know a lot about Savannah schools, tell me about athletics. How tough 
are athletics and especially football there in Savannah? It's very tough and competitive. Um, we have a lot of strong history and strong tradition. And I'm not originally from Savannah. I'm from the Atlanta area. Okay. So it's still a little bit new to me. But the rivalries there are unlike anything I've seen, even in the Atlanta area, very passionate. And in Savannah, when people ask you where they went to school, they're not asking if you went to Georgia or Georgia Southern or Georgia Tech. They mean, where did you go to high school? Okay. Even, even later in life, that's what people associate with is where they did their high school days in Savannah. Well, thank you so much for being here. We cannot wait to see what happens in the AAA game Great. coming up right after this. Thanks so much. Yeah. And we are going to turn our attention back to flag football, send it down to our sideline reporter, John Nelson, who has a special guest. Yeah, very, very special guest. So the family Frazier is what's attached to Pope because it is Kay Frazier who's the head coach and your dad is his assistant. So brother Scott lives in Fairhope, Alabama. That's a five hour drive, right? Correct. So Scott didn't tell them he was coming. He shows up today and your, your brother actually teared up a little bit when, when he told me and when he finally saw you here. Well, this is my first game in the t couple years that he's been coaching and obviously couldn't miss this once in a lifetime for my dad and my brother and these girls and just excited to be here. So, so wait, what, what was the subterfuge here? Basically, he's like, no, I can't, I can't make it. Yeah. So my wife was actually leaving town with one of our sons today. So I've got, I'm, I'm supposed to be on daddy duty right now. You're doing a great job. So, yeah, I know. So the other two kids are back in Fairhope with a babysitter. So I had a good excuse when I told him I wasn't going to be here. And then you showed up when? Uh, 30 minutes before game time. <laughs> and you end up with all of that. Scott, congratulations. Glad Thank you made you. it. Family support, Hannah. That's what it's all about. And it's great to see the family Frazier is a part of the Pope program. I know all about juggling family. It's actually my twin second birthday today. So happy birthday, girls. Happy birthday Shout to out them. to them. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Region's Halftime Show. Much more to come from Pope and Alatuna. It's the Division Three Flag Football Championship right after this. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Just looking. I only buy local and sustainable, so. Oh, well that shirt's not local. You should be wearing cotton. Georgia's a major supplier of cotton worldwide, so if you'd like to buy local to support Georgia, buying cotton's a great place to start. It's renewable and sustainable. Naturally. Thanks. That's a polyester fiber made of oil, by the way. Where's your dressing room? State University. High school seniors, your Georgia match letters have been mailed and the possibilities are endless. Visit your student dashboard on gafutures.org to see which of the 45 colleges and universities made your list and claim your spot today. Halftime, the Division Three state final. Alatuna looking for some revenge back from the regular season against Pope and they've got a seven to six lead at the break alongside Dave Reynolds the flag football expert here in the state of Georgia I'm Wiley Ballard and Dave we uh, saw a couple of defensive stands there in the first quarter in the second quarter it seemed like things opened up offensively what did you see first from Pope on their touchdown drive a huge fourth down conversion yeah again nice job of, of just stay being steady moving the ball downfield moving the ball downfield you get a couple stops don't change what you're doing offensively uh, we're still gonna see a lot of motions and underneath things from the Pope offense we saw that it finally gave up and got a touchdown in the first, and then sorry, the second quarter. And then Alatuna with just, what, two and a half minutes or so on the clock, they get the ball back. Uh, they manage the time very well, and they find a way to get in before the end of the half. Yeah, also on a fourth down play, right? And so uh, we've seen Alatuna kind of spread the field out a little bit pre snap uh, to get their players open in space. So a uh, nice job right there at the end of the half, not being uh, uh, slow on what they had to do there to get the touchdown. 
Uh, it appears we're going to see most of the offense through the air based on this graphic here, Dave. We've got to combine five total One, rushing two, yards. Three, yeah, four, I'd, say, yeah. I'd say so. But again, look at the play count, too. I think that's so important. Flag. Yes, is it a 40-minute game? It is, but because of it's a running clock, there are so few possessions. Both teams possess the ball uh, no more than three times. Yeah, nice job by the quarterbacks there of just t of taking what the defense gives them. Uh, turnovers are massive in flag football with the limited play. Uh, totals there, so uh, expect the quarterback to continue to be able to hold the football, and again, don't force the issue because that's when we get in trouble by the quarterback. Now it's a seven to six score. Realistically, Alatoon is going to get the ball to begin the second half. How many possessions are we talking here? We had just five in the first two quarters. Yeah, again, three for each team could be realistic there. So again, so you're going to be so you're going to be very uh, limited on uh, total possessions. Well, I was looking down there to see if John Nelson has uh, head coach Kevin Frazier with Pope, and he does. Nelly, what do you got? All right, let's catch up with Kay Frazier and find out what happened. Great play call. And I saw the first thing you did on the on the fourth down touchdown, you pointed at somebody in particular, and you go, great call. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's my dad. Uh, he, he had been kind of eyeing that corner over there, and um, we thought we could catch him on fourth down with the hitch and go, and um, it was a great route, great throw, and they executed it perfectly. So, yeah, I was pumped about that one. And what kind of adjustments are you making? Because after that score, Alatuna clamped down on you offensively, and it's a one-point game here heading to the third. Yeah, they, they're really athletic. Um, we're, they're, they're taking away a lot of our deep stuff, so we're having to, um, you know, keep it short. And um, off, defensively, we got to keep doing what we're doing and just always got to look out for number 20, um, Flynn. She's a beast. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can do that in the second half. And your, the ball movement also one of the, the hallmarks of what you do. That's also getting you those yards, and it's forcing them to kind of be on the hop. That's right. we got to keep doing that. Um, it's, it's always good to have misdirection and try to get our athletes in space, and uh, we're going to keep, keep doing that for sure. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Let's send it back up to the penthouse for the start of the second half. Thanks, Nelly. It's easy living up here. Let's take a look back at what we saw in the first couple of quarters, our two scores. There's that hitch and go route, Dave. Great catch from Olivia O'Connor. Absolute bomb. Yeah, Riley Bensman dropping one in the bucket there. That gave Pope a 6-0 lead here on fourth and two. Aoife Flynn, if you blinked, you missed him. Just absolute speed right there, right here, there, and gone. Macy Strickland looks like she's turning the double play back there, the way she catches that snap and cuts it loose. Absolutely. That's You're, why she has so successful as a quarterback. Not quite baseball season yet. A couple more months, Dave. <laughs> and the pull behind the line. A sack gets us started. Macy Strickland caught that time. Nice job rushing one right there and apply just the same amount of pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, Faith Stokes with the sacks. That'll be a loss. Back to the nine-yard line, a loss of five. Second and 11, this pass corralled. The flag is still on and stretching forward. That's Lila Paradiso. Sets up a key third down on the opening possession of the second half. Nice job continuing to play, right? You don't know if your flag belt's necessarily broken or not, so nice job of shifting the hips and then getting back up the field, extending the football for an extra yard, kind of cutting that distance in half here. Big third down here, right here. Greyhounds trying to get off the field in a hurry. Buccaneers trying to build the momentum as we start the third quarter. Third and eight, they gotta get to that painted number 30. And a pass over the middle and stuck well short of the line to gain. Anna Varner with her first touch of this state championship, but the pull from Olivia O'Connor, and Pope's going to get the football. Fourth down, offense elects to kick. Nice job with just stepping right up as a linebacker, preventing that from being any kind of success, shutting down right there in his tracks. So Alatuna will punt Julia Devon. Playing her first year of flag football. She's a soccer goalie in the spring, so... Makes her a good candidate to be the punter for the Bucks, And the nose might have been pointed a little down there. A short punt taken by Sarah Gentry. And it's going to be really strong field position after just a 21-yard punt if you're under down, eight minutes to play. If you're down here in the Pope student section, that's exactly what you want from your defense. You're on defense to start the second half, get a three and out, get your offense back on the field. 
Oh, we got swag surfing going already. And I got that swag. I'll leave that to you. My bad. First and 15, got to get to the 30. And some good moves from Riley Benzman as her flag pulled from behind on Reagan Fuchs. Riley Benzman there in the first half, nine for 13, 74 yards. He's thrown for over 4,000 yards on the year. Did we just double our rushing yards in the first half on that think, one play I right think we there? did. I, that was a gain of six, we had a, or a five. We had a total of five yards rushing between both teams in the first half. Benzman to pass. And, ooh, that flag, a little slippery. Fuchs with the pull on O'Connor. The second reach, and now third down and short. Yeah, good job again, just, just taking what the defense gives. You don't force it. Trying to get back up the field a little bit. Good job. A couple extra yards, bring up a third and manageable here. Definitely four down territory. Don't force it. Third and six. And that pass is complete. Carly Ooms with the catch. We have not called her name too often. She'll be marked short of the line to gain, though. It's going to be fourth down and a long three. Nice job right there by the junior linebacker with great instincts. A lot of misdirection players going this way, going that way. Stays at home in the right place at the right time. Pull the flag. Huge play. And a reverse action. Multiple pitches. And the pass is complete to Oobs, and she's got the first down. That's a high-level play call and design from Pope. A lot of variations. That player's going that way. That player's going that way. Buys just enough time to get the ball off. Throws it into traffic. That's an exciting flag football play. That was a direct snap, and then Three pitches all on one play. Gets them into the goal to go zone from the 15 yard line. Again, the goal line is the 10. Chest pass forward, the extra pitch, and it drops to the ground there at the five. It looks like they're going to rule that the flag was pulled there, I think, on Kate Davenport. Again, you got to have the center. You can find that open space and still looking for that pitch relationship. Obviously, the flag was pulled. Good call there by the officials, but. Heads up play once again by number 30 at the center position. Already more than halfway through the third quarter. Pope trying to retake the lead. Benzman and what hands Jasmine Barnes picks her pocket. High powered offense here in the, in the six yards to go for the, for the touchdown here. Now the whole field shrinks even more. Tough sledding here for the Greyhounds. We're heading in the end zone. Six more yards to gain for the lead. A double pitch, a triple pitch. And this is going to set up fourth and goal from about the four. O'Connor, the last Greyhound with the football. And this, the biggest play of the game thus far. I mean, how many pitches can we have in a play? As many as you want to. One, two. I mean, I can't even count that high. Nice shot right there by the Greyhound offense. Mixing up looks. Trying to make sure the Buccaneer defense is disciplined and staying at home. Huge play right here. Our first two touchdowns were both scored on fourth downs, and I think Pope is going to take a timeout here. They're all coming to the sideline. There's only five seconds left in the play clock. Yep, and timeout called by Coach Frazier. You know, some coaches will see them hang on tightly to those timeouts. Time out of the game. Coach Frazier has chosen to take them before two fourth down plays the first time they drew one up and they scored their first touchdown. Correct, and, and again, Coach Frazier uh, been around the game of flag football forever. And so he knows, again, clock management, timeout management, situational awareness here, right? Limited possessions for a half. We're down here on the four yard line. We're knocking on the door, knocking on, trying to compete for a state championship. So Coach Frazier understands how important this one possession is for the Greyhound offense. We've seen some long drives ever since that first quarter. It was a nine-play scoring drive for Pope, their first touchdown. This will be the eighth play coming up. You can see Coach Kevin Frazier and his father, Mark. You know, his father, Mark, always wanted to be a coach. It was not his profession, but he's been coaching cross-country at Pope the last couple of seasons, now helping out his son with flag football. 
you got a lot of those stories in athletics, right? The relationships that people have with different people. Uh, what a beautiful thing. How awesome that be to be around your dad at a level like this. So here we go. Ben's men, and it's in her snow, dropped by Flynn. But it's all the same, a turnover on downs, and Aoife Flynn, she made the huge catch for Alatuna's touchdown, and she prevents Pope from taking the lead here in the third quarter. Yeah, definitely the quarterback of the defense. Sets everybody up nicely. Riley's not known for her, her agility and her speed and running the ball as much as maybe some other quarterbacks there. Nice job, Buccaneers. Ben, don't break. You're not out of, the, out of the woods yet here, though. Backed up against your own goal line. Got plenty of work to do for the Buccaneers. So for four minutes off the clock on that drive. That completion to Anna Varner. Healthy gain there on first down. They get out from, I'm not going to say the shadow of their goal post because the roof's closed, Dave. We can't have shadows in, might, here, here at the big top. Is that's a Nelly big window. We might, have some, we might have some shadows in that window. But again, nice job with Buccaneers to spread out the offense so far. And then opens up the middle uh, for the center of that last play. Second and nine. Strickland. And incomplete. She bought as much time in real estate as she could, but couldn't feather it in there to Sophia Settle. Now third down and nine. And for Pope, they didn't get in the end zone, but they do have a chance to get off the field here quick, force the punt. So a whole quarter left to play. Alatuna, seven to six lead, and Macy Strickland so far today, closing in on 100 yards passing. You know, she's going to be a shortstop in college at Liberty University, another one of those multi-sport athletes that has really flourished on the flag football field. Strickland, a deep shot, and too deep all the way beyond midfield. Well, I feel good about her making plays in the hole up there at Liberty. She's got the arm strength, Fourth but down. overshot her target there. Has elected to kick. Throw on the run right there. Maybe it's a little too much giddy up right there. Nice job by the Greyhound defense. Second time out. Uh, third quarter here. It's a three and out. Nice job the great hound defense I know it fell incomplete but that's that's a pretty fine spiral there punt from Devon taken in plus territory and O'Connor is going to get great starting field position going to be around the 25 yard line the goal line being the 10 yard line a 28 yard punt a 10 yard return and if you're Pope, you're disappointed, obviously, you didn't get in the end zone that last drive, but here you are taking over again, still the third quarter, and you've got great field position. Right back where you left off, minus a couple of yards, obviously, uh, but first down is six, right? Line to gain is 20. Playbook is wide open right here. Final minute, third quarter. Oh, that was quite a give and go there between O'Connor and Nixon. And again, O'Connor and Nixon, they're both in the basketball team. That kind of looked like a give and go in the paint there. They had a game last night, Dave, that they played in. We were talking with Coach Frazier, and he said we were playing an opponent that we were able to build a healthy margin in, but you could tell all of our flag football players out there on the court a little careful, not, not trying to you know, create any potential issues the night before a state final. Benson with some time. Barnes gets the flag, and they'll mark her down for the sack. Jasmine Barnes. She's been a difference maker up front, getting pressure all by her lonesome day. Yeah, again, when you have three blockers uh, and then a relentless effort there by Jasmine Barnes goes right through it. Riley Benzman trying to look downfield and set something up. Just a little too much time there on the internal clock. You, know, you talk about a lot of basketball players out here, uh, softball players out here, right? If you're building a program, that's the things you need as, as multi-sport athletes. That is the end. Of 32 the sacks on the year. We got a one point game heading to the fourth and final quarter. The Division Three state final. Alatuna and Pope. They're in the same area. Pope, the area champs. Alatuna trying to win this state. We'll be back in a moment from Mercedes Benz Stadium to crown a champ on GPB Sports. Our number one priority is protecting our players. That's why we're writing new rules for the sport and developing innovative educational tools that protect our athletes. This is player protection. This is high school football. The only in Cartersville, Bartow. Three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, 
in an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation, only in Cartersville, Bartow. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Hey, 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 here we go. Start of the fourth quarter, a one-point game in the state final. And Dave, I want to take a look back at this rush block sequence. This is what you're talking about when you say non-contact contact sport. Yeah, sure. We get a little, you know, going on there. But again, we see the hands behind the block, the rush, the, the, the blockers are not extending their body out to get in front of her initiating contact there. So good technique up front by Pope on that play. And then also good technique by the rusher, the defender on that play as well. And I think if you're out there watching, thinking, you know, maybe I want to try and be a rusher or, or maybe you want to try and get your high school to, to start playing flag football. We've got nearly 250 teams this year here in the fourth season of flag football. And year one, we had fewer than 100. So the sport exploding. And a beautiful pitch. Good hips from O'Connor, but she couldn't quite break free. John Nelson on the sideline. You got the scoop. Yeah, it was in both huddles as we we're getting ready for the fourth quarter confident over here with Kay Frazier and Pope they said we got this everything's fine they debated a couple of plays put one play in their back pocket a little bit and the play that they went with got them the first down on the flip side for Alatuna biggest thing keep everything in front of you don't get beat from behind like what happened on that fourth quarter the fourth down score 100 percent John that's a great point we heard coach Davis talking about that in your visit with him. So it's first and goal now. And it looks like they'll mark the ball at the 15 yard line. Hazel, nice. Hazel Schultz coming in hot there. So we go to the option for you to the right side and nice job right there. The defender, the rusher, just getting and playing the quarterback and the pitch person at the same time. If you're the defense, you want that no doubt. Offensively, we got to figure out how to adjust that one time rusher. That was Courtney Coleman there, number five for Pope, getting on the field. Oops, complete. Nixon passes over and off to Mac Wiley, who had a huge moment in that semifinal, Dave. She had the game-winning interception against Blessed Trinity, and, and Coach Frazier told us that it was fitting that she made that catch because she was one who, who often uh, evades the spotlight. It's not about her. Exactly, and you want those humble but hungry athletes, right? The competitors, it's not about me, it's about the team. It's always nice to have that spotlight, though, when you do have success yeah. at a high level, <laughs> no doubt, right? Well, here we go. Pope inside the 10-yard line for the second time in this second half. Can they get in this time? Third and goal from the eight. The flag stayed on, the pass is complete. Nixon reels it in, but it's going to be a gain of a yard, maybe. And now it sets up a critical fourth down, and will Pope call another timeout here ahead of this fourth down play? They have just one left. They will. There it is. Here's a look at the third down play. Again, having a hard time slowing down. Jasmine timeout. Barnes up front. Their third and final timeout of the game. Nice job continuing the play, though, by the quarterback right there. Knows the rush is right on her hip. Play to the whistle. Picks up a couple extra yards there. A little more space here down here in the red zone now than the last time out. The Alatoona Buccaneers semifinals in 2020. Knocked out in the first round two years ago. Back to the semifinals in 2022. They have been so close to getting to the state final. And here they are. And Coach Jordan Davis, a middle school teacher, so he can't even get to practice on time most days. He has to rely on his assistants to start it. And what a huge moment for his program. And they've got a huge play coming up, really both sides, because now that Pope is out of timeouts, that's seven minutes and 40 seconds you see there on the clock, it will vanish. Absolutely. And again, shout out to all the assistant coaches out there across the country. Assistant coaches make the head coach a really good head coach. Here we go. Pope two for three on fourth down conversions. This pass jarred loose by Macy Strickland. Davenport had her hands on it. And Macy Strickland 
with the biggest breakup of the season for Alatuna. Again, when you get when you get down here, right at the goal line, the field really shrinks, makes it even more challenging. And obviously, advantage the defense right there, being so uh, close to the goal line. Again, Buccaneers, nice job bending, don't break. And tipped in the air, Flynn makes the catch anyway, and O'Connor pulls her flag. First down and 14 goes to second down and 13. And how critical is it for Pope to get off the field here? Yeah, exactly. And again, the first two times out for the Buccaneer offense, we've seen a three and out. Nice shot right there by Faye Stokes. Again, her hands up once again for a pass breakup and, and just balling up that play in a hurry. Over the top to the center, Hazel Schultz. And Alatuna, I don't think they're quite at a place where they can start trying to drain the play clock. But if they get this next first down, they can really start to put some pressure on the clock. Huge play for Pope. They've got to find a way to force Alatuna to punt. Yeah, or I beg your pardon, Pope to punt. Nelly talked about getting the defense, Alatuna. everything in front of you from Pope off, from Pope defense. Uh, but here, definitely that line in the game, the other 20-yard line, the 30-yard uh, spot on the field. Got to get off the field right here. Here we go. Got to get to the painted 30-yard line. Third down and eight. And now as the play clock was just about to expire, timeout. now Alatuna calls timeout. timeout. Of the game. A little bit of uh, friendly commentary between Coach Jordan Davis and our officiating crew, led by Sheldon Smith, group out of the Atlanta area. Yeah, not a bad officiating staff. And by the way, for all those officials on the couch at home, if you think you can do it better, go pick up a whistle, go join a local association. Uh, we know across all sports, across America, we're in an officiating slump. We're at our low numbers. Uh, I think the high quality officiating has been on um, display here in the bins all week long. But again, happy to have you if you'd like to join uh, the, the, the zebra stripes out there, not from Foot Locker, but from actually on the field. You can't have a game without the game officials, the referees, the umpires, all the above. They take it just as seriously as the coaches, as the players, administrators, as the band, as the student section does. Uh, so a vital piece of our game. And who knows, maybe you could find yourself up here in the booth. Dave's contract's up after today. Absolutely. <laughs> Rules guru <laughs> Wiley Ballard has learned so much in the past three years. All righty, here we go. 5.59 on the clock, a huge play. Strickland dropping back to pass, hoisted it deep, looking for Settle, it's incomplete. And right with her, stride for stride, Abby Benzman, the sophomore, great coverage. Fourth down, Alatuna has elected to kick. Kind of a, fr a frustrating, kind of a frustrating uh, second half here for the Buccaneer offense, the third three and out. But again, like you said, Wiley, foot to foot, we're right there. You want to play it short? Cool. We'll lock that up. You want to take a shot? Cool. We'll be on top of that as well. And thanks to that coverage, she's gotten the ball back in the hands of her older sister, Riley, Pope's quarterback. But first, the punt return from O'Connor, weaving across the 30-yard line on this 80-yard field. And more favorable field position here for Pope. A 28-yard punt, a 12-yard return. And I think all three possessions for Pope in this second half have started in plus territory, Dave. Yeah, again, when you go three and out offensively, makes it a lot more manageable on a punt to get to the plus side of the field, to get that more favorable starting position. So out of timeouts, first and eight. Riley Benzman stepping up, and a flag comes out. Her flag down, but a flag is thrown from our head official, Sheldon Smith. Let's see what the call is. And the clock will run during this penalty. Illegal contact, defense, 10 yard penalty, results in a first down. Let's go down to John Nelson, Jasmine Barnes with the penalty. Looking at Pope on offense, they're starting to draw up plays. Normally we would say they're drawing plays up in the dirt, but they're drawing them up on legal pads here right on the surface <laughs> on the artificial turf. Watch for a double corner post. Saw that develop last time out. Could this be it? Over the top, and it is caught! What a catch! 
Carly Oobs with the touchdown score. And Pope has the lead. John Nelson, the savant. Buys just enough time to get the ball downfield. It'll be a two point try. Right there in traffic. Everything on the line. Playmaker to playmaker. Special wide receiver, first year playing flag football. And now the all important extra point. They're going to go for three here. And the pass is caught by Oobs again. Oh my goodness, Carly Oobs going for two from the 10 yard line. So 14 to 7. And tell me about this, Dave. They started at the 10 yard line, if you will, quote unquote. They're going for two here to make this a seven point game. Yeah, nice heads up right there, Coach Frazier. He knows time and place. So, again, so in flag football, you can go for one, two, or three. Fill on the try. Two is from the 10, and three is from the 15. So, a little more risky as you back it up. A nice job by the Greyhound offense getting the two point conversion. Now, Macy Strickland racing ahead. She'll pick up a yard or two before Faith Stokes pulls her flag. And now Alatuna down by seven. They have two timeouts, just over two minutes left. Again, if you're at the Buccaneer offense, you're trying to get a little bit of momentum, still looking for that first, first down of the second half. This is the two minute warning. So now normal tackle football clock rules come into play. If you go out of bounds, the clock stops. Incomplete pass, the clock stops. Strickland off her hands, incomplete. Looking for Hazel Schultz. Third down. Tough break right there by the Buccaneer offense. Got the person in space. Would have picked up the first down. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. We can't live on potential though. Big time play right here. Got to have a little success. Four down territory with the clock the way it is. Strickland over the middle and a pitch back behind. Sophia Settles has the first. O'Connor's got her flag. New set of downs, and as they set it up, the clock will stop momentarily. Pick up a tempo a little bit here by the offense, but again, the success point of this is got the first down. We still have the football. Got to go, though. Strickland, two-player rush, throws a dart across the middle. It's broken up by O'Connor. And a flag has come out. They're going to get pass interference here in O'Connor, maybe. Clock will stop as this penalty is relayed. Pass interference, defense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. That's good on good right there. What do you see on that call, Dave? Yeah, again, like tackle football, you can't run through the receiver there. Is she on the side? Is she playing through the back? Flip a coin. First and eight. Maybe a double pass. Buying time. Paradiso skips it in to Aubrey Moore. She had her just a little short. Again, nice job extending the play, giving yourself some opportunities there. Not necessarily the 4,000 yard passer right there that has the football. Maybe had two people open. A lot of a lot of emotions here, a lot of nerves here. Let's stay grounded, take care of the football still. Strickland back over Paradiso, a second chance, throws it back. Oh, nearly intercepted. Mac Wiley, she had that game-winning pick against Blessed Trinity. She nearly had another to win the state title. Heads up defense right there. You apply the pressure on the quarterback, and then you stay with the quarterback because you know the pitch, backwards, forwards, all the above. Nice job number 20, applying the pressure on the first quarterback. And then we're right on top of it for the forward pass. Final 90 seconds, the shirts are coming off in the stands. It's all on the line. Free rush, complete, and they will rule. 
that Schultz's flag was pulled. She got enough for the first down, though. So the clock will stop momentarily. It's first and 19 at the 39. Again, the goal line on this field is the 10-yard line. Yeah, nice job. Been spreading the defense wide recently. Nice job again going back to the middle, finding that open space, picking up the first down. Strickland stepping up. And was it completed? Yes. Kiki Daniels just picked it up above the blades of AstroTurf. Still not a tough passing window right there. Face Stokes getting her hands up again. Alatuna has two timeouts. Nice, nice calling either yet. Oh, wow, what a snag. Strickland, her pass complete down the far sideline. Finding Kensley Grinney. Boom, there you go. Buccaneer timeout, top of your screen. Okay, good. Hey, let's catch our breath right here. We still have one timeout in the bank. Obviously third down here. Timeout. Alatuna, their second timeout. Got to pick up the, the first down. Keep it moving. Clock to 42 seconds. A nice pickup right there on second down. Get the ball extended. Just keep plugging down the field, right? So again, clock's moving. We're good on the clock. Opportunities. We're athletes. Be athletes. Big moment. Big time. All of the above. Pope defense talking about you keeping everything in front. Still, still pull flags. Buccaneer offense talking about keeping the spread in the ball. Looking for that pitch relationship. Look inside the Pope puddle. Hey, there's John Nelson. I bet he. I bet he's finding out what play they're going to score this touchdown on, Nelly. Yeah, we're kind of <laughs> listening a little bit. You toss to me, and I'm listening in the huddle. They're trying to sort things out a little bit. The buster for a second, and I'll get you some info. All right, I got you. Thanks, Nelly. He's hard. He's hard at work. Nelly doing his thing. Nobody better. All right, here we go. Third down and three. Macy Strickland, 15 for 25 on the day, over 120 yards. Going to the air again. First down, and it's Grinny. But she gets out of bounds, most importantly. Yeah, nice shot right there. Again, face Stokes applying the pressure. The single rusher up there makes the quarterback move a little bit. Throws it to the boundary. Nice job, heads up right there, getting out of bounds. Now he's just stopped for the first down, but completely stops until the next snap until uh, because of the uh, run out of bounds. 37 seconds left. Alatuna needs to get in the end zone and then convert that extra point. 13 yards. The goal line is that painted 10 yard line here on this. Flag football field, 80 yards. Oh and now boy. a flag comes out. I think we've got the lay of game. Delay we game. do. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. I'll say this, Dave. We've talked a couple of times. We've seen Pope stall out there when that field's gotten crunched up. I'm not sure that was an intentional delay of game, but maybe a little more space if you're looking for a silver lining. Yeah, again, time and score. Probably not trying to back it up five yards there. Uh, maybe he's a little slow getting the correct play in. We do have visible clip play clocks here in the bin, so breakdown communication between the quarterback and the coach. So here we go. First and goal from the 19. Strickland gets it away, and the ball in and out of the hands. Are they calling this a catch? Yes, they are. Sophia settled, saying she had possession before it was jarred loose. And a timeout, timeout call their third and final timeout by Alatuna. And because she dropped it, she couldn't get out of bounds, so the clock was going to run. Yeah, you know, it's one of those risk-reward things, right? So do you try to get that bounds right there? Maybe could have, would have, should have. But again, with flag football, right, you make that one person miss that flag, and then boom, you're gone on the sideline. So not going to fault the athlete for being the athlete there. Do burn the last time out of the half. Now we got a big problem. We get a sack offensively. Again, Coach Frazier talking about keeping the play in front of you, pull flags, do what got us here. So no timeouts. Would you consider throwing anywhere in front of the end zone, or do you have to throw something to the end zone with no timeouts? If, if, if you're in the huddle right now offensively, you're talking about two plays. You're talking about the first play you're about to run and then setting up and hurrying up to this, probably the same formation so you can quickly get a second uh, snap off if need be. The state final, two schools from Area 3, Division 3, both in Class 7A, Strickland. 
to the air. She's got a receiver. And Sophia Settle. And we are one extra point away from a tie game. Ninth touchdown of the season for Sophia Settle, the senior. She has been clutch these last couple of games for Alatoona. Very frustrating. Couple first offensive drives for the Buccaneers from Ackworth, Georgia. But hard work pays off. Stay the course, stay the course. Finally, get the ball in the end zone. Alatuna opting to go for the tie here, Dave. Absolutely. If they don't, if they don't get this, the game is over. There's, there's no one side option, no other way for Alatuna to get the ball back. They must score. Strickland off her back foot, and it's incomplete. Broken up. Pope is going to win the state championship. And after such a poised, methodical drive down the field, it comes down to one play. And the ball batted away. That was Sarah Gentry, perhaps the most improved player, according to coach Kevin Frazier. And she just made the state championship winning deflection. And you can see the heartbreak there on the Alatuna sideline. And all it's going to take is just one knee and snap, and there you have it. Pope, the state champions of flag football in Division Three. What a tremendous accomplishment in just their third season. They'd never even made it to the semifinals before this season. And now Carly Oobes, the game-winning touchdown and game-winning extra point. And the Greyhounds are state champions. Talked about offense, offense, offense for Pope. Then we see the defense early in this third quarter. And then, again, last play right there for the extra point, the try. Ben, don't break. Defense wins championships. And now they will go celebrate with their fans in the stands. Okay. And an embrace there from Coach Kevin Frazier and Jordan Davis. And Dave, you know, we talked about it at the start that this was a game that was decided by over 30 points in the regular season. Both coaches told us there's no way it's going to be like that again. And Alatoona, I mean, talk about the poise they demonstrated going down the field time pressure state championship on the line and they came up one extra point shy. It's tough to beat a team twice in the same season. Shout out to the ground great house for doing that. Nice adjustments made from game one to game two by the Buccaneers though. Oh we got the gritty coming from Coach Frazier. <laughs> Man, look at the excitement there in that huddle. The smiles, oh high fives. Oh Carly Oops in her first year of flag football catches the game winning touchdown pass, an extra point. For Coach Kevin Frazier, first time head coach in any sport, Dave. His third year wins a state championship. What he lacks is a head coach experience, obviously the flag football knowledge. And we saw the offense clicking right there, definitely all day today. He started playing flag football as a sixth grader at his church. And he knew then it would lead to a state championship. He knew it, uh, he knew it then. It starts somewhere. <laughs> and Carly Oops, man, you know, in the game she played this year, Dave, Pope was undefeated. The only two games they lost, she was not available due to other commitments. Challenge being a two-sport athlete, a multi-sport yes. athlete, right? You got to balance the schedules, practice times, maybe even some study time as well. Uh, so again, when she's here, she's ready to ball out. And Alatuna, they'll have their seniors head to the top of the podium. In fact, there's a lot of them. 
and they have nothing to hang their heads about. Just a terrific state final coming down to the final play on the extra point. Sophia Settle with the touchdown catch. You see Jasmine Barnes up there, Macy Strickland, Haley Schultz, Eva Flynn, Kiki Daniels, Nora Watson as well, who's been out with injury. And again, I mean, that just tells you the whole story right there, Dave. Just so much emotion uh, on both sides and heartbreak for the Buccaneers, but still a lot to be proud of. And they'll be able to look back and hopefully view this as a breakthrough for the program. Their first ever state championship appearance and, and fitting that Nora Watson gets to hold the trophy there. You know, she wanted to be out there helping her team. Got a lot of great schools across the state of Georgia and flag football. And again, Alatoona semifinal, 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 now a final appearance. So definitely on the upper echelon of flag football programs across the state. So Alatoona will finish the season 22 and 3. And once they dry off those tears, they'll be proud of what they accomplished and know they've got some unfinished business next year. But today. The Pope Greyhounds, state champions. They finished 26 and two. And for a season that was defined by their offense, Dave, it was their defense on that final play that won the title. Absolutely. Ben don't break. And let's go down to the trophy presentation with our very own John Nelson. Thank you very much, Wiley Ballard. Time to present trophy number one for day number three. Two great Cobb County programs, both top 20 nationally. Shout out to our friends from Alatoona. Fantastic season for you. But it is now time to present the third trophy in flag football this season, and we're going to do it to some Greyhounds. And to do it, the executive director of the Georgia High School Association, Dr. Robin Hines. Thank you. First off, I want to congratulate Alatoona on an outstanding season. I also want to congratulate Alatoona's crowd for showing up and also for having the GHSA student section of the year. Congratulations for that. You guys were great. However, today it gives us great pleasure on behalf of Alpha Insurance and the Georgia High School Association to give the state championship trophy to the Pope Greyhounds. All right, Coach, what does this mean for your team? Oh, man, it means so much. It's a shame that someone had to lose today because that, what an incredible game. All, all credit to Alatoona. I mean, what a, what a game. But, um, yeah, our girls have worked extremely hard. Um, this group really wants to prepare. They want to get better. Um, all season long, just gotten better and better. And we faced a ton of adversity today uh, and had to battle through it. I'm just so proud of them. They're very, they deserve it. Well, congratulations. So what's it been like for you to be a part of this program and build this program and stand here on this platform as a state champ? It's hard to even believe. I know Coach Woodson's been with me since the beginning, and some of our players have been here since we started. And to think where we started, you know, running in note cards as our plays and totally unorganized to three years later, here we are, I would have never believed you. Um, but it doesn't happen without these girls. They're so smart, dedicated, work hard, and they're so athletic. Uh, as they just showed. <laughs> and you also get to share this with your family, with your dad as an assistant coach. What's it like to have multiple Frasers win a state title? Yeah, we've been doing this our whole life, whether we've been coaching or not. We sit on the couch and come up with plays and stuff like that that teams we think should do. And uh, now we get to put it in action with these girls. Um, and I have my brother and sister come in from far away to come visit and watch the game. Um, that just meant the world to me, as you saw me get emotional before the kick. So. Um, I really just love this team. I'm so proud of them. Congratulations. Pope Greyhound, state champs in flag football. Let's send it upstairs to Wiley and Dave. Thanks, Nelly. And in so many ways, the journey that Coach Frazier just described as far as the growth of his program, it's really a microcosm of the sport here inside the state of Georgia. I mean, the caliber of play we've seen the last three mornings here in the flag football state finals going back to Monday with Southeast Bullock now 62 and 0 then yesterday Greenbrier taking down Lithia Springs and today the Pope Greyhounds triumphant 
over Alatoona as we welcome you inside our booth one final time here for the flag football season alongside Dave Reynolds. I'm Wiley Ballard, and Dave, the growth of the sport, that was the first thing you told me once we tossed it down to Nelly, was how far this sport has come in the state. What have you seen? Yeah, in a couple of years only, right, we have eight states across this country who have sanctioned this sport of flag football. Uh, we, we're on TV here in the state of Georgia. We're in the beautiful Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, colleges are starting to give out some scholarships also at the NAIA level. So, again, if you're not on board with this flag football sport, uh, even Montana is trying to get involved, right? So uh, it's a beautiful sport. You see the emotion, the passion, the excitement, again, from the coaches, the players, the administrators. Had a band here at halftime. Are you kidding me? Student section, don't worry about school. Let's go support these student athletes. And it's, it's a rock star sport. And a chance to play here in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It was such a thrill covering these three games uh, the last few days. We'll take a look one more time at the highlights from our Division Three final it got started. Riley Benzman dropping it in a bucket for Olivia O'Connor, giving the Greyhounds a 6-0 lead. That is a dime. I mean, and serve Coke and peanuts on that flight of that ball. I mean, beautiful pass. But Alatoon in the waning moments of the first half, Eva Flynn, what hands. This board just takes one play right there, and then boom, we're up the field for a touchdown. So Alatoon up with a 7-6 lead at halftime. And look at this toss right to Carly Oobs in the end zone. And John Nelson was telling us that's a play they drew up on the whiteboard on the sideline. Absolute thread in the needle right there. In traffic, just athlete on athlete right there. Beautiful play. And after the extra point, a 14-7 lead. The final 30 seconds, Sophia settles in the end zone. And Alatuna cuts it to one, a chance to tie. The extra point from the three. Not to be. Sarah Gentry breaks it up, and the Greyhounds win the state title. Again, terrific drama. And, and what else is new? State championship week here inside Mercedes-Benz. We've already had a multiple overtime game on the tackle side with some terrific flag games. And we've still got three more coming your way all afternoon and evening here on GPB. So happy to have you with us. But in flag football, Pope takes down Alatoona. A 14-13 win to give the Greyhounds the state title. We've got plenty more coming for you. Up next, our 3A title game between Cedar Grove and Savannah Christian. That will begin shortly right here on our air. But for our flag football crew, we say thank you to everyone who helped us bring you these games, especially our producer, Steve Graham, our analyst, Dave Reynolds, John Nelson down on the sidelines. I'm Wiley Ballard saying so long and good afternoon from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The Pope Greyhounds, state champs in flag football. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine When a car in front of you crosses over the line They're in your space, not looking at your face Distracted drivers all over the place Say, we will, we will buckle up Sing it Say, we will, we will buckle up What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Welcome into the GBB tailgate party. I'm Hannah Gooden. We are live from Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the 2023 GHSA Boys and Girls State Championships. It's day three, and we just wrapped up the first one of the day, the Division Three flag football matchup between Pope and Alatuna and the Greyhounds. Pull it out 14 to 13 for their very first flag football victory in school history. And John Nelson is standing by on the field with our Cotton Commission player of the game. John, go ahead and give her that towel. She's got the towel. She's got the hat. QB Riley Benzman. Okay, now here is the play. Here's the game-winning touchdown right here. This is how they drew it up. That's how, that's how the Frasers drew it up on the turf at Mercedes-Benz. 
Georgia Cotton Commission natural choice for Georgia, our natural choice for player of the game, QB for Pope. How does it feel? Oh, uh, really good. <laughs> What's it been like this last couple of years to, to be knocking on the door, knocking on the door, knocking on the door, and then finally get to a final and then finally get a title? Um, so the first year of flag football, it was we were all new to it, so we didn't really know much about it, how to play. So we weren't the greatest. And then the summer going into my junior year, we were just really good out of nowhere. Like we played over the summer and we were really good. And then we started realizing like we could actually like do this when the season started. And so we we thought we had it. We knew BT was going to be our biggest uh, last year. We knew BT was going to be our biggest competition in the playoffs. And they knocked us out of the Elite Eight, and we were so close. And then this year, um, Final Four game, we played BT again, and it came down to the last second. We got an interception, game-winning interception, with like 40 seconds left. And I mean, we were all just sobbing because we've been so <laughs> close. Like, we knew we could do it. We've known we could do it for so long. and so. The feeling of finally, like, right, this doesn't even feel real right now, but, like, the feeling of finally reaching our goal that we knew we could do all along is amazing. And so, once again, you get the hat, you get the towel, and here's the play, once again, the game-winning play. Talk me through that real quick. So, we lined up in our play 13, and so we had Olivia, sorry, <laughs> I don't even remember. Go for it. Olivia usually does a, like, deep route. Olivia and Carly do deep routes on the outside. And then we have Giselle right here doing a post to the middle. But we switched because we knew they were going to be keyed in. They knew, We knew that they knew that play. So we had Ogo in the slot instead. And then Carly, instead of doing a go, she did a skinny like post over. And caught it. And she's just, she catches everything. And anything. she definitely catches yeah. everything. She caught it twice, got yeah. the PAT. Congratulations, Thank you. player of the game. Thank you. State title goes to Pope. Let's send it back upstairs. Thanks, John. Congratulations, Riley. Wow, how impressive is she? And I know the Greyhounds Nation is watching. Congratulations to everybody. Okay, we have many more teams and players to crown throughout this championship week. But what about all the student athletes that have excelled all season long? It's time to unveil our 2023 GPB All-Stars team. And it's time for the All-State team on